Mr. Thompson. That's right. PC Smollett, Sun Hill. I understand you've had a burglary, sir. I suppose you better come in. I called him, Marcy, or I had to. Great. That would be your answer. Send for the old Bill. Well, he's got to be found, hasn't he? We'll find him all right. There's no danger of that. <sighs> Mrs. Thompson. I didn't want them involved. Well, what else are we meant to do? Oh, yeah, take it out on him, why don't you? I said we could sort it out. You agreed. That's right. Blame me. It's all down to me. Now, hold on. Uh, we know who did this, you think. We've been burgled by our own son. I see. You any idea what's been taken, sir? Well, it was money. Marcia had some cash hidden. How much was it, madam? About 60 quid. And some jewellery's gone. What my mother left me when she died. Can you describe it, sir? Well, it was uh, an engagement ring. Just a little diamond with a gold band, you know, nothing special. It was quite a big diamond, worth about 200 pounds. Nah, more like 40. It's antique, Frank. Well, we never had it valued. I mean, it wasn't anything to put a price on. You had a look in your room, son? Yeah. Well? Well, he hasn't taken anything. Well, that's something. He wouldn't steal from him. He's got no argument with him, has he? Well, not this time, anyway. Look, he hasn't ever stolen from me. Of course he hasn't, love. I don't know why your father can't understand. It's not either of us he's trying to get at. Marcy. Why don't you leave him alone? It's not his fault and it's not my bloody fault, OK? Don't you swear to your mother! Frank, leave it. Mr Thompson, if I could have some more details, please. Sure. Well, can you give me a description of him? Uh, his age, that sort of thing. Uh... Well, that's him there. So it's a few years old, but he's not changed that much. Mm -hmm. uh, date of birth, then, please, sir. Uh, the 16th of June, 1976. A juvenile. Colin Lewis Thompson, dark hair, six foot, probably wearing a red baseball jacket. He hangs around the parade if you're in the vicinity. We're not. Tell him we're somewhere else. Right, Sarge, we'll take a look. I'm sure I've lived in before. The name rings a bell. Don't ask me. Talk to the youth and community section. Well, doesn't it with you? Yes, alarm bells. Can't stand juveniles. Can I just make this absolutely clear, Mr Thompson? You did tell Colin that he wasn't allowed in the house, wasn't allowed to take anything away. Oh, do me a favour. I've got to ask you, sir. After all, he is your son. He might say he's got every right to get back into his own home. Well, he hasn't lived here for months. We took his keys off of him, changed the locks. It's not the first time, sir. You didn't think of taking out an injunction against him? Stop him coming here, I mean. An injunction? My son? No, fair enough. Well, they'll have to take him in hand now, won't they? With a full Monty, won't they? Well, nobody wants that if they can avoid it. Why do you think he's stealing from you? Is it drugs? Ah, of course not. He's not stupid. Is he unhappy about something? I don't suppose you've got kids, have you? No. Well, think yourself lucky you haven't got mine. Oh, here we what? go. Put something on someone else. What? It's mine. Now get off. Well, you ain't going anywhere, are you? Look, I'm telling you. Get down. Oh, I'm telling you to stick it, all right? You haven't even asked us nicely yet. All right, sir. Th these two should be arrested. Play their cards right, and they will be. Now get off. Why? You're Colin Thompson. You're the Queen Mother. I said get off now. That's a good boy. You got to answer my question. Look, he doesn't have to, June. I know you, didn't I, Colin? What was it last time? Shoplifting or knocking down old ladies? What are you talking about? We just want to talk to you. We don't want to talk to you, right? Been home recently, Colin. Well, is that a crime? Whistle up behind you. What for? Sierra, yeah, it is a crime when you burgled a place, yeah. What? Your mum and dad got back and found a place ransacked. You want to tell yeah, me about it? Yeah, can we have a van at the top end of Priory Road? we got no. a lad answering your description. You sure? Direction. Yeah. On its way, June. Don't go away. I'm oh, not. Sir. Where were you off to? Get off. I'm talking to you. Get off of me. I tend to leave me alone. What's your name, Colin? What's your full name, son? Come on. Oh, what's it to you, eh, Dad? You want to be clever. You're under arrest for burglary. Oh, yeah. You lot of pits. You do not have to say anything unless... Get out of it! You do not have to say anything unless you wish to do so. But what you say oh. may be given in evidence. Do you understand? Get up! Right. 
You're gonna be sensible now. Oh, here we go. Look, just calm down. I haven't done anything. No, I'm sure, really, it's just what you have and haven't done in a minute. His name's Colin Thompson. He's suspected of breaking into his parents' house. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think he's been drinking. All right, Gary. How old are you, Colin? 16. Right, June, so that's SO5, CRO and Yaks. And can you have a word with Donna? Sir. Have you got a social worker or a solicitor? Solicitor, Mr Kemp. So no social worker. Right, Colin, I'll tell you what we're going to do in a minute. We're going to sit you down so you can sober up a bit and get yourself together. But in the meanwhile, let's see what you've got in your pockets. Come on. That's it. Yeah, and the jacket, come on. That's mine. Doesn't suit you, mate. Just mine. Leave it on the table. It's mine. All right. Cut it out. Just mine. We don't want to take this any further. That's up to us. There's nothing you can do to him without our say so. That's the law. You see, we've had the police route. Anything more you want to know? Those are slags. Can I give you a lift, Mr. Thompson? No, well, I'll, I'll drive my own car, thanks. Handling, taking and driving away, afraid, drunk and disorderly, too much. Burglary, mugging. robbery. Hang on, it's a long list. Two mugging offences and arson at his teacher's house six months ago. He's a sort of general purpose hooligan, I'd say. You're going to give us the details, eh? Yeah, we'll do. Cheers, June. Ron. A word. Yes, good. Um, this boy's mum and dad. They're on their way now. Mind you, you'd have a hard job working out who wears the trousers in that family. Wheel them in, eh? For the interview. We'll give you the nails. I'd say so, yeah. Good man. You gonna behave yourself now? Might do. Right then, come on. You come with me. We're gonna have a little talk. Come on. What's the difference between this cell and a grown up cell? This is a detention room. Yeah, but what's the difference? These things are a bit different. So? Why? Why, you want to be locked up in a real cell? We'll see what we can work out if you're that interested. Wouldn't bother me. Come on, this way, mate, come on. Sarge? Oh, no. Colin. Come on here and sit down. No way. No way. Come on, Colin, relax, yeah? Listen, you lock me up in one of them cells, I don't mind. Please, Carl. Do as your mother said. I'm not talking to you. Yes, you are, Colin. But just relax, yeah? Please, don't put us through this anymore, Colin. Come on. Now, Colin, you're still under caution, all right? Interview with Colin Lewis Thompson, officers present, PCs Quinnan and Smollett, in the presence of his parents, Mr and Mrs Thompson. OK, Colin, um, I'm going to ask you a few questions, give you a formal interview in connection with the burglary at your parents' house. Do you understand? I suppose so. Right, now, you admit that you stayed at home when your mum and dad were away on the 8th, 9th and 10th of this month. What of it? We only want to get to... But why? You lived somewhere else. You wanted to. Hold on, Mr Thompson. Said your mum and dad's place wasn't good enough for you. Well, I listened to him going on. That is enough. Now, you've said you took the jewellery. So? So? Look, I'm not interested in why. I just want you to say what you did. Yes, then. Right. Now, you say you didn't take the money. No. Well, £60 pounds gone missing from the house, Colin, and you were there. Don't know nothing about it. Well, you sure you, you sure you didn't take a bit here, a bit there, a couple of quid for a packet of fags, something to eat? No. Oh, come on, you know you did. Shut up. Shut up! Will you please be quiet, Mr Thompson? The money's not important. I don't care about the money. Just as long as you didn't sell the necklace and stuff. It was your grand's. It's not what he stole, it's the fact he steals at all! Shut up! Don't you talk to me like that. I talk to you how I want! Everyone else does, don't they? I'll 
take you in hand, my lad. I'll take you in hand. That's enough, Mr Thompson. I'm going to terminate this interview, Dave. It's not going to work. Too right, isn't it? I washed my hands of you a long time ago, laddie, and I'm wasting my time now. I want him charged, you got that? I want him to stop coming anywhere near my house. Oi, oh. oi, oh, oh, Leave it out. And I'm going to murder for you telling me what to do. Oh, no, 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 just calm down. Right. Wrong, right. wrong. Right. Yeah. 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 Why are you waiting? She says, I don't know how to take him in hand. It isn't as if we haven't tried. I mean, you talk to him and he accepts he's done wrong, and then it starts again. Lying, hitting me, his brother. Well, not his mum. No, he'd never do anything to her. Do you know how much he's had off of us in four years? 5,000 quid's worth. Broken windows, cash going missing, whatever. What I'm saying, Sergeant, is... You know, I, I didn't mean to lose my temper. OK. It shouldn't be long before we can deal with you. Still assaulting a police officer, isn't it? Sorry. He kept his grandmother's jewellery. Well, you don't believe he wanted it for himself, do you? Well, he might have. I mean, why hold on to it for the best part of a week? Because he couldn't sell it. No, no, no. Think about it, right? He had it on his person, what, three, four days? It might actually mean something to him. Well, we've arrested him, haven't we? Or isn't that enough for you? It's called crime prevention, June. Oh, I thought it was called armchair psychology. Juveniles and domestics, Dave. You don't want to touch them with a barge pole. Hello? Mr Banks, right. Yes, I'll hold. Any progress? <laughs> well, someone needs to talk to the boy's mum. Yeah. Yeah, all right. No, actually, I was thinking it was a paper hanky job. Right, Sarge. Cheers, Drew. Mr Banks. This way. Social workers, eh? Send them a mile off. Sir, would you like to have a check on? Bob. Sir. Spare a minute. Yes, sir. The Thompson boy's parents. Yeah. He'd taken property from them, I understand. That's right. And you asked them to be present at the interview. That's right. Bit of a slip up that, wasn't it? No, sir, I thought... You know what the rule book states. The parent or guardian of a juvenile should be the appropriate adult, unless he is suspected of involvement in the offence or is the victim. In such cases, it will be desirable for the appropriate adult to be some other person. Section C, paragraph 1, if I remember correctly. I'm aware of what the book says, sir. It does beg the question, Bob. If you know what it says in the book, why not apply it before Mr Thompson assaulted Smollett? Well, I believe the matter could be settled with the parents present. Informally, if you like. Why? Well, I thought that would be obvious, sir. Did you really think a lad with his background and previous should have been allowed anywhere near his mum and dad? My eye, sir? I wanted and still want to settle the argument between the boy and the parents. Without social workers, without uh, solicitors, without whatever. Without getting him stuck into care, without... But social workers are qualified people, Bob. They're trained to negotiate matters like these better than we are. He has seen off half a dozen social workers in his time. All the more reason to tread carefully. The boy is now nearly 17 years old. He's made eight appearances in juvenile court in the past year. Now, if you look at any of his offences, most of them are only minor, but they won't be seen that way by the magistrate. Now, if we can manage to avoid another court appearance... But we haven't managed that, have we? Relations with his parents haven't improved. They've got worse. Yes, sir. I made a mistake. Bob, I'm not trying to score points. You don't need to do it all yourself. The blokes who make the rules don't want these kids institutionalised any more than you or I do, do they? No, sir. Well, with any luck, we haven't done any lasting damage. That lad has got a temper, hasn't he? Well, what's the matter? He's just chucked all his food back at me. Let's have a look. I'm not eating it, and you can't make me. My husband won't want to press charges. You let me talk to him and he'll change his mind. Mrs Thompson, you can't allow Colin to go on doing this to you. You've got to show him who's in control. You don't see it, do you? He's a good lad, really. He just needs... It's his father. That's what sets him off. You mean he's doing all this just to get back at his father? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? And what about the money? What about it? Well, it was yours, wasn't it? It's only money. Nothing personal. Hasn't he stolen money from you before, Mrs Thompson? 
It's pin money. Just odd bits of change lying about the house, you know. Stuff you leave and forget about. Yeah, but it soon adds up, doesn't it? I mean, it soon adds up. Are no. you trying to tell me it's my fault? No. Yes, you are. You're saying it's me he's stealing from. Look, I'm not And if saying... you think he could have... could have... could have done anything to hurt me, it's just not possible. Mrs Thompson, a lot of youngsters go through periods like this when they're just not... when they're just not controllable. I've only ever wanted the best for him. Of course you have. But maybe the best thing right now isn't for you to take him back home. Just for the time being. If you press charges, it'll be up to someone else to decide what happens to him. What's in his best interests. And believe me, they will only have Colin's best interests at heart. Send him to court again, you mean? Yes. But it won't necessarily mean a custodial sentence. In fact, it probably won't. When he was in court last time, I just couldn't look at him. I kept thinking it's our fault he's like this. We did it. We made him what he is. It's nobody's fault, Mrs Thompson. It's not yours, it's not your husband's. Sometimes these things just happen. That's not what everyone else will say. It's not up to anyone else. You mum and dad had to work hard for that money. All well, we're going to do is tie up the place with it. And what did you do with it? Buy a few beers, leave it up a bit, that's hard to Constable, yeah. what my client did with the money isn't the point at issue. No, it's not. How much have you taken of them in the past few months? <laughs> Don't know. Why do you think they're going to charge me with that and all? Once again, Constable. Mr Kemp, this is not the first time it's happened. That's why Colin's father isn't prepared to let it drop. Well, it's not up to him, though, is it? No, it'll be up to the juvenile court. Not if it gets that far. And don't you think it will? I don't mind. They can stick me up in front of the beak if they want. You don't have to say that, Colin. I'll say what I like. Why did you take the jewellery? It was your grandmother's, wasn't it? <sighs> yeah. Were you very close to her? Hey. Well, she used to live in your house, didn't she? What of it? She's kicked it now, hasn't she? So I thought, why not? Might as well see what I can get for it. Must be worth at least a ton. That's all right, we'll look after him. Mr Thompson, sir. Right. I'm Inspector Munro. I'm the duty officer at this station. You understand why you're here? I don't imagine I have to tell you that assaulting a police officer is a very serious offence. You could be very heavily fined or imprisoned for what you've done. Do you admit to the offence? Yeah. I'd be quite at liberty to charge you with this and put you in court. However, in this case, I've decided that a formal caution will be more appropriate. That means it'll go on record and be considered by the courts if anything like this happens again. Is that understood? I take it you will accept a caution? Yeah. This is for you to read and sign. Thanks. There'll be a public gallery, won't there? Loads of people coming to gawp at us. We're not liked, you see. If my husband had a better job, we'd try and sell. It's not a very nice neighbourhood. Well, you don't have to be in court yourself if you don't want to. Your husband can go. It's not that. I just don't want it getting in the newspapers. It won't, Mrs Thompson. Can you be sure of that? Yes, I'm sure. Thank you very much. Mrs. Thompson, don't you want to wait for your husband? Nope. Right, Sergeant. Are you finished with the Thompson kid? I don't expect I'll ever be finished with him. Still, it keeps me out of mischief, doesn't it? You got his father in his one, have you? We just released him. Well, his son's going to say that he was badly treated by your arresting officer. He says that he was threatened that unless he cooperated fully in the interview, he'd be put into a cell. You don't really believe that, do you? I don't think what I believe may have happened is of much relevance, Sergeant. You do know that what's been alleged is strictly against the Police and Criminal Evidence Act guidelines. Yes, I do, but come on, the kid's trying it on. I did rather wonder at the time why he was so unusually cooperative in the interview. Look, I will feel bound to raise this matter when it comes to court, and it may be pursued to a formal complaint. 
All right, well, thanks for the warning. I'll tell Dave Quinnan. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Good night, Sergeant. Yeah, cheers. I'll see you. Quinnan stuck his neck out for that kid and all. Yeah. You've led us all a bit of a dance, haven't you? Is that why you do it? Is what why I do it? You want a bit of attention? You think nobody loves you? So you make a pillock of yourself and get everybody jumping up and down? Is that what it's all about? No. I didn't ask to get arrested. Yes, you did. You were crying out for it. But you're going to get all the attention you want and more where you're going. When are you 17? A couple of months. Oh. Well, you'll be up with the big boys then, won't you? Oh, you're looking forward to that, are you? Being treated like a grown-up public nuisance instead of just a juvenile one. Sharing a cell with two other blokes and a bucket for a toilet that only gets emptied once a day. Or do you think they make up stories about what prison's like? Of course not. Have you heard of male rape? You're not too young to understand what that means, are you? Do you think that doesn't happen either? Listen, you've got a complaint to make about this place. You wait till you see what it's like in the real world. I didn't say I had a complaint, did I? That isn't what I heard. Listen, if you stop trying to wind me up, you can go. Wind you up? Yeah, you know, coming in here, giving you all these horror stories. Listen, I don't give a toss what happens to you. As far as I'm concerned, if you get put away, it's one less body for me to worry about. Enjoy your tea. No, it's been a quiet shift, really. Just a couple of bodies in for the night. Bob, don't go away, Dave. I want a word with you before you book off. Yes, sir. Don't worry, Dave. You can count on us. I've got to apologise for this one, Stuart. I'd intended to get it off my hands before you arrived. Look at the draw, isn't it? You're going to be a nuisance. Well, it hasn't exactly been a picnic. Juvenile court in the morning. All right, Colin? All right? Yeah. Anything you need, lad? Do you want to wash and brush up? Maybe an extra blanket? Yeah? <sighs> What's up, lad? Sorry. All right, mate. I didn't mean it. Tell my dad. Oh, come on. You just sit tight here. You won't come on any arm. Okay. 